Hey everyone, it's Steve from Plot 42. So, just a quick video. This is going to be multiple parts. I've been promising to do a video of me making some wine. It's one of my first wines I ever, well, first brew I ever made when I got into home brewing. This was like just about a year, just over a year, what, a year ago. And I said that the wine I'm going to, the first wine I made was rhubarb wine. So I trolled the internet for some wine recipes. And got to talk to a chap on one of my blogs that I follow, and he had a simple wine recipe, and it's the same one I've, I've used ever since. It doesn't matter what fruit I use, I use the same recipe, and I've just changed the fruit around according to what what, what fruit I've got. Obviously, we may have an, an allotment, also I get I can get plenty of rhubarb, so I've stopped stop the freezer up with it and make my wine and make my beer out of it. So today, it's be like I say, one of many parts, parts, parts. parts is this is how I, I get on with it so I have three pound of rhubarb I've, I've got six I've got, I've got three pound of rhubarb and what I've done I've washed it dried it cut it up and put it into the freezer and that's what you get chunks, chunks of rhubarb put them in the freezer you can leave them in there a week or so until it's frozen. Obviously, it is better when you, once you've done that. So once you defrost it, it breaks up even more instead of using it fresh. So what I need next is ferment, little fermenters. I'm going to go two separate batches. And you need some sugar. So normally on this recipe that I use, for most of them, I used three pounds of sugar in each one. So I used three pounds of rhubarb and three pounds of sugar. So that's for the, for the initial start of it. So also make sure everything's sanitized. And so I don't know, I'm going to put an airlock on these ones. I clean them all, sterilize them, and I put a bit of sellotape over the end to stop any crap going in. All I do is empty the sanitizer out. Get your rhubarb, so it's already pre been pre washed in the past, been frozen, any, any crap that's on there, it'd be dead anyway. Shove that into me. Okay. Like you see, I'll just show you that. Just in the bucket there. Just, I just opened, I just opened the sugar. I should have been prepared this, shouldn't I? You, know? you can put less sugar in if you want. Tell it to you, and all I do is try again. Well organized, so but there's real bad. There's my sugar, and all I do is just pour it over, over the real bad. Two pounds of it, and there's your pound. Pour it over, then just get my lid. And that's it. So what I'll do is cover it up, leave that in conservatory somewhere, it's not too hot, too cold. Just let it let it all defrost. And once it's all defrosted and the sugar's mixed together with it, then that'll be lost with the next part of it. So if, if, if it's too warm, then obviously then you know, if it defrosts too quickly, you may get some like a bit going off a bit mould. So all I say, all I do is put three pound of rhubarb in, cover it with three pound of sugar, put the lid on, and just leave it. It should the text twenty four hours or so, depending on how warm it is. If it's just all defrost and the sugar is to sort of like dissolve within the rhubarb, so it won't all go into a liquid, but you, you'll notice a difference once it's all defrosted. So that's that's part one done, and I'll come back for you for part two. Cheers. Hi everyone, it's Steve, I'm Steve again. Right then, part two of this rhubarb here. Right, it's, the rhubarb has been stood in the sugar 24 hours. And I'll just show you what it looks like. Bear in mind, I've got two. You see all the liquid in there? Most of the sugar dissolved into that. That's the first one. There's the second one. 
So what I need to do with that is I've got some water and some more water. I just fill two pounds of water, boil them, and that's cold. I'm gonna cover some of the rhubarb and sugar with water, give it a quick stir, drain it into a bucket, put a bit more water in. You've got to try and rinse as much sugar off that rhubarb as you can, and normally squash a lot of it down. So pour the water over, give it a stir, drain it, squash it down, a bit more water, try and get as much out of that sugar as you can into a bigger barrel. So for right now I'm doing two batches, so I'm doing it by, by two. So it's gonna be okay trying to hold the camera, but I can't really do, I can't really do it. Like I say, in there, we put the water in there, squash it, then just transfer it into a, another, another bucket. You'll get the gist, 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 just a bit when I start doing it. Back in a minute. There is quite a lot of sugar left in the buckets, so you add a bit of warm water and it'll dissolve a little bit more. So what you do is, keep stirring it. So you can hear the sugar at the bottom crunching. Give it a bit squash down. Get some flavour over them real babies. And what you do is, that liquid that's in there, Transfer it into a, a clean one that's been sterilised. I'll, I'll just keep going back and back, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to these two barrels and transfer it to the, to the barrel. Back in a minute. Right then, that's the rhubarb squashed and the sugar drained off it. This is what you end with. Nice pink liquid. So I think I've just got. Just put in about 10 litres in there. So what I'll do now is, you put in, you must put in some, some tannin, and I can't remember what it's, what it's for. You could buy it, but the next best thing is black tea. So a cooled black tea. So I'll put two of them in. Gives it a bit of colour, I right? think. So, first put it there. So, so what you do now is transfer that. Take a sample out to do a reading. Then transfer that to Demijohns. So, I'll get that done. And I'll come back to you. Right then, let's go to mix and match. The wine's in the demijohn. What I did before I got to the top, I put a teaspoon of standard yeast in. Put a teaspoon in between, in the funnel. And then a bit of liquid that was in there, then rinsed it out of there. Rinsed out of the funnel, straight into there. See if it's sticking to the side of the neck. Do the same there. And what you do is so you go. get that, get your jelly on, stir that and just give it a shake. Make sure the yeast is mixed up. Well fun. Might have filled a bit too much. You can see all the yeast in the bottom there. And once that's done, boom, airlock. Airlock, 
And that's it. Two bottles, two Demi Johns full. With rhubarb wine. So it can't be no simple than that. And we'll do it now, we'll do a hydrometer reading. So there's the one there. The wire hydrometer. There's your hydrometer, it's another one. So you take a reading at the beginning, the fermentation before you add the yeast. Then you do a reading at the end, once the fermentation has stopped, or whenever you want to stop it. <coughs> Look it in, it tells you how much sugar and alcohol is going to be in it. I'll leave a link on the bottom, to to you as a hydrometer. Stick it in, it's quite a bit of sugar in there. Quite high up that. That is Let's see what it is now. So it's 1100. One, one, zero, zero. One, one, zero, zero. I don't know if you can see in there. Can't see. So that's going to be quite a strong wine. I don't know the percentage just yet, but you went at it. I write down later on what I estimated if I let it ferment all the way out. So you can you can let it ferment all the way out, let it finish bubbling, then bottle it. Or you stop the fermentation when you feel that the wine is at your required taste. So I'll give it a quick taste test. I'm smelling real bad, isn't it? That is nice, it's just sugary liquid really. Like right. real bad and sugar, just 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 liquid. Liquefied heaven. Also the the taste will change once it starts once the yeast starts turn all the sugar into alcohol. So like, you can leave it a week, two weeks. And just keep just, just leave it to ferment out and then just rack it into a few more bottles or a few more damage ons till it clears out then you can rack it into a bottle uh, keep giving it a quick taste test halfway through once you find it at the right taste that you like stop fermentation then bottle it or rack it a few times then bottle it and we'll there we are I'm hoping that you get the gist of that. But I'll come back to you again once I've done some more readings, a bit long, a bit further down along the line. Anyway, catch you later. Hey Ryan, it's only Steve. Right, just a quick update from yesterday. So I bottled that real bad wine, bottled it. Put the, the wine into um, some damage on yesterday. I whacked it upstairs. I put it into a cupboard, it's a bit, bit, bit too cool. So I've just brought it into the bedroom, it's a little bit warmer. And that's some bubbling up to now. Sometimes they go faster and sometimes a little bit slower. So wrap up a bit of towel. So it doesn't look too bad up to now. So we'll see how that goes. So I'll keep you informed. Cheers. Right then, I've left the wine in the Demijohn. It's been in the, the wine's been in the Demijohn since I think the 12th of January. And now it's the 3rd of February, it's been bubbling away nicely. So I've decided to, to do a reading on both of Demijohns. And the near enough come up, end of the same percent, same reading. This one, if you can see that. I don't know if you can see it. Probably can't. Yeah, can't see it. Anyway, one's come out at nine nine eight, and this one one's come. This one's come out at a thousand. See if focus on there. No, I'll put a, a link down below, and I'll have to read the hydrometers. 
So I've done so, so, like I said, two readings on both the image ones. I'm happy at stopping the fermentation now as it is now. So that's the colour of it. It's not a bad colour. It's not a real bad colour as you expect. It is quite pale. But going back to the readings, they've both come in at 13.3 and 13.5% ABV. So it's quite a strong wine, really. I should have done some readings maybe a couple of weeks ago and see what the percentage was then. But if you like strong wines, then it's not so bad. So what I'll do is give it a quick taste test. You can smell a hint of rhubarb, not a lot. But give it a taste test, see what it tastes like. Quite, oh, that's quite tingly on the tongue. So I've had this a few times before on the other batches, but you could taste, taste the alcohol, you, could, you couldn't drink too much of this. Oh, that's really nice. So it, it does get better and better as time goes on. So what I'll do is I'm happy at, at the, the ABV now, percentage. So I'm going to stop fermentation. And so the recipe that I use, I stick, I think it's one or two Camden tablets in, crushed Camden tablets in. And also and that'll, that'll kill a bit of any bacteria and that'll stop fermentation. So what I normally do with that is crush them into a clean damage on, siphon off one damage on onto, onto it, give it a shit, airlock it, and just, just leave it for a bit longer just to clear out. And I'll do that to both of them. But I'll get a little video of that. So, so yeah, yes, yeah, so I siphon onto the Camden tablets, leave it for a few while, for a bit, and then you just keep siphoning it off into different different damage ons just, just to clear it any bits in it. But if you, if you do it good up the first time, you, you should be able to get rid of all the bits at the beginning, the little sediments at the bottom. But the more and more you, you siphon it into different, different demijohns, you will get, it'll get clearer and clearer. And you won't, also when you get your bottle of wine, you won't have no bits floating around in it. But if you're happy with the bits floating around, that's entirely up to you. But saying about the percentage, say it's been there nearly four weeks fermenting away. If you only want a low alcohol one, you just stop fermentation halfway through. I mean, you could stop it a week afterwards. It'd be really sweet. So this is quite dry. So, like, but I'm happy. That's uh, that's what I drink. I drink. Well, I drink anything really, basically. One, because I make it myself, and I had no complaints about it. What what what, what complaint about me on? But so that would be the next one then is the. Siphoning it off into them johns and stopping fermentation. Back in a minute. Right then. Next part of the wines making is get these two. Should have transferred them into two demijohns again. And just keep racking. I'll just rack into a fermenter. Putting these in. As you can see. Camden tablets. It is Two tablets per five litres for full stabilisation. So when we're doing 10 litres, I'm putting four tablets in. So you crush them, put a bit of warm water, add them to fermenter, then siphon these two into there, leave them for a bit longer, then siphon them again into another barrel, leave them a bit longer, and again, 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 until you get it, it's clear and you've got no more sediment at the bottom. Then it's time to bottle up. So we'll shove this in and I'll catch you soon. Like I just said, there it is. Eight litres of raw bad wine. The Camden tablets in. So I should kill any, any more fem fermentation. So I'll stop it from fermenting. Then we'll start racking it in again in some, some other barrels. So we'll see how it does. See you soon. Hi everyone. It Right then, last part of this wine video. Right then, I only, I only racked it a couple of times, from the one fermenter to another fermenter. 
you can do that as many times as you want till you get a real clear wine. I mean, this is the wine that I've got. So that is, see my ugly mug through there? And I said, I've just wrapped that now. So that, that will clear, you can't really see here. That will clear out. That is quite clear, that. I mean, so, so I did eight nine litres. And I've got three, six, nine, eleven bottles. Eleven bottles of rhubarb wine. So just got to get the labels on, get them put away for four to six months, and crack them up and drink them. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Sorry it was all mix and match, but so you can't do it all in one day. So yeah, so sorry, I got ten, ten and a half bottles. One of the bottles. Just a, a tidge lower than normal. I'm not bothered about the labels on these bottles. I'll just stick, stick a little label on so I know what it is. But can't go bad. Half the allotment. All the pay for was the sugar and the yeast. So, oh, 14.6% it came out right. So, which wasn't too bad. I had a quick sample. Well, you, you can tell it was real bad wine, but it was quite a bit of alcohol on it. You could taste it on your tongue. So, leave that to you. Hope that's all for you. And that's how I would make my real bad wine. And that's how I make all the other wines. So I'll catch you later. Cheers. Thanks very much. And thanks for watching.